Hello, this is Hellbent. Welcome back to part two of the functions tutorial. In this one, we're going to be looking at first um, passing by reference. So in our last example, we had returned a value from our function. So we passed two values into it and then we returned something. The, one of the limitations of this is that we can only pass, by doing it this way, is we can only pass one value back. So what if we wanted to return multiple values? The easiest way to do this is by passing by reference. So I mentioned before about how um, our variable, when we create a variable, it gets assigned an address in memory. And then in that address is its contents. So what we're going to be doing is we're going to actually, when we do this by reference, we're going to be accessing that the address of the variable that we're passing. So in our function, we're actually going to be manipulating whatever the value in that address is. So we don't actually have to return any value because we've done it in our function. Okay, so the easiest way to show this is just to do it. So that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to set up, let's do three variables. Now there's a lot of things that you can do with pass uh, by reference. But this is pretty much what we're going to be covering in this. And in later tutorials, I might go into more advanced things. Um, at the very least, this will be a, a, a good launch point. So if you want to, in the interim, go and look up further things that you can do with by reference, at least now you'll, ha you'll have a, 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 at least somewhat of an understanding on what exact, how exactly this works. Okay, so we have three variables. Now up here we had to say that because we were going to be returning a value, we had to have another variable that's going to get assigned to the function. Because this time we're not actually going to be returning any values, we're going to be manipulating their values by reference, like changing their value by accessing their address in the memory. We don't actually have to have a return this time. So this time what we're going to do is we're just going to call our function. So I'm going to create a function. And once again, I'm not using very good names. This is do as I say, not as I do, because I'm trying to get through this quickly. Um, you should use functions that make sense. Okay, so we have our function call here. We need to pass it some values. We're going to pass it A, B, and C. And before I go any further, I would we don't we didn't actually have to initialize our variables here. What we could have done is by putting them in this spot here, even if we didn't declare them here, auto hotkey is cool like this. As soon as we try to use a variable, if it doesn't exist, it'll create it. So even if these didn't exist, as soon as we put them in here, as soon as it calls this function and tries to pass them, they get initialized. They'll get started with a garbage value. And then once it's in the function, it'll actually do our updating its value. But for this first example, We'll have created them, we'll put a value to them, and then we'll show that the manipulation. So next, we need to actually create our function. Let me make sure, yeah. Okay, and just like before, we need to tell it what we're going to be passing into it. Except this time, instead of just using the variable, we're going to need to say by reference. So that it knows what we're doing. And we're just going to do x by reference, y, and by reference, z. Okay. And then we need to do what our function is going to do. Okay, so now because we've said that we're going to be using these by reference, we're saying in, instead of storing it in its memory like we would with the other one, like creating a new variable. What we're actually saying here is we want to access the address where that value. So like I said before, we had two variables. We had the variable up here that was called name that had the value of hellbent. And we had the variable down here that had the name. Uh, it was named name and it had the value hellbent. This time what we're doing is we're saying, hey, look, what we really want to do is we want to access that access that location there and change its value. 
So that way we don't have to actually return something because we've manipulated it through here, through our function. So there is nothing to return. Okay, so let's uh, let's say that x So we're going to take the value of a equaling 1 to, and we're going to change it to the word 1. We're going to change the value of b from a value of numerical value of 2 to the word 2. And the same with our c. Three. Okay, so there we go. We're done, and we will run it. Oh, you know what? I forgot to do. After our function, after our function is done executing, we're going to have a message box. And we're just going to pop out our three variables. Actually, let's do it by easier way for this case so we'll force an expression okay so there you have it you can see that we haven't returned any value and when we just tested this one up here I or one of the earlier ones I did show that Oh yeah, it was in inside the function. When we tried to display the value of name inside the function, it didn't do anything. So we could we could see that they are two different things. So you can see that even though they are two different things and we didn't return any value, we were in fact able to manipulate the values of our a, b, and c variable without actually returning it. Okay, so this is by reference. Like I said, there is tons of other things that you can do with this, but uh, I don't have time in this tutorial, so this will have to do for now. Maybe later on I'll come back and do more things dealing with by reference, but uh, for now this should get you started. Okay, last but not least, we're going to look at some tips and tricks, and hopefully I can... Uh, do this on the fly okay so let's say you're writing a program and your programs a thousand lines of code or two thousand lines of code and let's say you have on your fifth when you wrote your fifth line of code you created a problem that is going to affect all the lines of code after it so that way when you're done even though you can you'll you'll have the problem you'll see what the problem is because of the way that you writ you wrote your script for for whatever reason I'm just trying to be like super like uh, worst case scenario for for whatever reason when you wrote your fifth line of code it had a cascading effect so that way you can't just go back and fix the fifth line by because everything else after it has to do with that fifth line so changing fixing the fifth line isn't gonna do anything your your program is basically garbage you have to throw it out and start from scratch all over again well one of the ways you can avoid these kind of problems is by breaking your your program up into sections so pretty much any any functionality that your program does that's distinct so if it if it searches for a window for example so let's say if I I have a, a script that does a bunch of different things but one of the things that it does is it checks to see if a specific window is open or not what rather than writing all my code as one thing what I can do is I can create a function and that function is the thing that actually performs that task and then I can include the call to that function in my program and I can take my whole program that thousand lines of code and I can break up everything into those smaller parts and if I can break them up even more if I can break up the little parts into even smaller parts perhaps that might be a good way of doing it as well okay and I think I have an example okay yeah so 
here I have an example of a function that I've created. Now, in this program, I could have done it as all one block. But because it's easier to break it up into functions, and then I can actually test that function, to, even if I'm only going to use it once. So one of the main reasons you're going to use functions is for is for things that you're going to do multiple times. Now in this case, this might actually be one of those things where I actually have to use this function multiple times for different things within the script. But even if it wasn't, even if it, it only used it one time, because it performs its own task by breaking it up, if there's any problems with this function, I can find it and I can fix this function. Right? So this function ended up being... Um, 35 lines of code. So here I have a function. It's only 35 lines of code out of 350. Right? And my whole script is broken up into things like that. So here we have a function called run script. So it does a specific thing. And within this function, there might be calls to other functions. Let me see if I can actually, if there actually was. There might not be. Okay, it doesn't look like there was, but there could have been. There could have been calls to other functions that did, that were smaller. Okay, another good thing about this is if you have a script editor or some other kind of good editor, um, once you create a function, you have the ability to actually collapse it. So when you get into really long scripts, you'll now have the ability to, once you're done working on that, that function, what you can actually do is just collapse it, and now you don't have, it'll be easier for you to navigate your script. So you can take all your functions, and once you're finished working with them, just collapse them down and it takes up a lot less space. So as we can see, I have here starting at line 150, and I have four functions, and by the end of them, I'm up to line 350 pretty much. right? So I've eliminated 200 lines of code into this amount of space. So that's another good thing about functions. And lastly that I'm going to cover on this is testing. So like I said, by breaking it up into functions, now this isn't always going to work, but there's going to be a lot of cases where you can actually take a function and test its functionality on its own. So now this is going to be an ultra simple, uh, I'm going to oversimplify this, but I think by doing it this way you'll get, the, get what I'm trying to say. So I'm going to create a function, uh, a hotkey. Uh, actually, let me create a function first. So I'm going to create a function. And to keep this ultra simple, all this function is going to do is pop up a message box. Okay, so here we have our, my function. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to test to see if that function actually works. And this is going to be one of the functions that I'm going to build my end product off of. So I'm going to use just a hotkey. So I'm going to use number pad 1 to execute that function. So all I'm going to do is I'm going to create my hotkey, make a call to that function, and then have a return. So now, as long as the function can be tested like this, like I said, not all your functions are going to be as easily tested like this, but perhaps, you know, let's say you have your program ended up being 50 functions that you broke up like this. Let's say there is a way for you to test them, but you needed to have five functions combined. Like there's the series of functions, you'd have to have five of them combined, so function 1, function 2, function 3, function 4, function 5, that when you put them together like that, then you can actually do this kind of testing. But sometimes you will be able to test a single function on its own. So now I have my function, and I can test to see if there's any problems in it. Oh, number pad 1. So now rather than spending hours and hours and hours writing a program that isn't going to work, I can test 
to see if it works, if this function works. And then I can go on to write the next function and I can test it to see if it works. And then the next one, see if it works and so on and so forth. So these are some tips and tricks that you can use for functions. Um, I hope you enjoyed and I will see you on the next one and I think the next tutorial for the main tutorial series, not the GUI tutorial series, the next main one will probably be labels. We'll go on to labels and then we'll go on from there. Okay, have a good day. I will see you on the next one.